The other type is is people who are legitimately, legitimately think that these characters are gay. People who uh, you know read the Bible and and actually think that King David and Jonathan had a gay romance. People who read Tolkien and legitimately think that Tolkien was trying to show a, a latent homosexual romance between Sam and Frodo. People who watch He-Man, I've received these kinds of comments and I just, I, I think, what? <laughs> these kinds of comments that say, the filmation He-Man was gay coded from the start. It was always gay coded. You know, this, this ridiculous notion. And, and I want to try to explain how deluded these people are to really think that, how self-centered, how, how really lost in the sickness of their own runaway sexualizations that they are. They're obsessed with it. They're obsessed with everything that they see that they encounter. All they can see is a sexualization of their own preference because that's all they look for in life. They're that consumed and obsessed. And, you know, you can see that on one level, like the person that I spoke of in the beginning. You know, let's talk about somebody who's just like a um, likes to watch children cartoons to to to, you know, get their sexual thrill uh, from from, you know, the little female characters or whatever. Right. Let's just put it in a heterosexual kind of um, context at first. Well, that person's just, you know, that person's disturbed. That person needs help. If, if, if the only way they can get a thrill is to watch Smurfette. Or uh, the snorks, <laughs> or whatever you know, uh, that that person needs help, right? That's not that's not normal. That's not healthy. You know, we we can say that. I don't care if you think how dare you say what's normal. No, that's just literally not healthy. That person's not going to be able to have healthy relationships in their lives if that's what consumes them. If that's what they see everywhere, if they can't even watch a children's cartoon without sexualizing some of the children's cartoon characters. That's not healthy. That's a sickness. It's the same thing, but we don't, our culture says, no, 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 you're not allowed to say that because if it's, if it's an LGBT community that's trying to argue for He-Man being gay or something, that's not unhealthy. That's just raising awareness. No, it's the exact same thing. And the problem is that we, our culture, the ideologue culture tries to encourage and, and it, it breeds that kind of sickness as long as it's in any one of the flavors of the LGBT community agendas, because that's not sickness. That's just awareness at that point. And it's ridiculous. And I do see this in, in um, academia all the time. I've talked about this, you know, uh, there are, if, if you're in the higher academia of the arts of any way, so, so literature, art history, um, music, even, even towards the social sciences, you know, even with uh, history to a certain degree, it's like this as well. It's starting to seep into every level. But the idea that there are certain lenses, there are only these certain pre-approved lenses that you're allowed to look at your art or the study of the art or the study of history or whatever through. And these pre-approved lenses all have to do with woke ideologies. You can be a feminist theorist. You can be a queer theorist, a Marxist theorist, a post-colonial theorist. There might be some new ones even, but they're all just any kind of variation or semblance or, or um, combination of those those basic ones. And I talked about this before when I was talking about feminist theorists, you know, they, they are, they're trained their brain. They can't watch a movie. They can't read a book. They can't play a game. They can't do anything and not think about, I just have this, this blinders on them. Okay. Is this fair to women? Is this something that I can use to advance the cause of, of feminism? Or is it something I can use to say how horrible this is against, against women's rights and blah, blah, blah. It's a limitation to your thinking. That's what these critical theories are. And in terms of our topic tonight, there is a critical theory. It's called queer theory. That's not a, a slur term or anything. That's that's the, the people who coined it that are, are trying to like reappropriate that term, you know, that at one time was a slur towards homosexuals. So that's the idea, like a reappropriation of the term. So it's not a slang term. It's, it's literally called queer theory. And that, that theory does the same thing that, that say, feminist theory does. It, it looks at every piece of literature, every movie, and says, how is this uh, bringing queer awareness or against queer awareness or whatever? It's just, it's a limitation. And that's all it can think about and all it can see. All it can see when it looks at art, but people are going, and it makes sense. This is the logical trajectory you would do, because if this is how you think about anything you come into contact with story-wise... Well, as I say in my intro to the to the stream, stories how we, they shape us, how we think about the world. So it becomes that lens through which you see everything in your life. You know, 
Owen Lister for $14.99. Thank you very much, sir, for that super chat. Says we just can't have bros be bros anymore, can we? Why can't Sam just love Frodo as a brother? There's more types of love than sexual, but the woke cult doesn't see it that way, which is honestly sad. You're absolutely right, and I'm getting to that. You're, you're absolutely right, so I'm glad you kind of laid the your foundation for me a bit. You're, you're, tr you're truly right there. So everything is seen through that lens. So if they see, you know, like you're saying there, if they see just two guys who are just truly good friends, whether it's in a story or just even out in the world, they they... They have to start, you know, the immediately, oh, is there something else there? They can't, they can't conceive of a friendship, a close, true friendship where two not related men can just be that close as platonic brothers, you know, and, and, uh, and be friends of that set. And as a result, what's the, what's the horrible consequence of that? A lot of men resist the idea of being that close to another man in friendship. Because the cultures trained them to, you know, oh, but if you do, you're probably gay, you know, and and um, and then you're not even allowed to resist that idea because then you're homophobic. So, I mean, it's just a cesspool. It's a mess that this this these woke ideologies have have developed. So, they they look at things like Sam and Frodo in literature, for what uh, for example, and they don't understand. I mean, it's really obvious. You can do the reading. You can look at Tolkien. It's not hard at all. For the you know Tolkien example to find out exactly what Tolkien was drawing on, he said it. For for Sam's relation to Frodo, he was drawing on the relationship of a Batman to an officer. So in the military, a, a Batman that doesn't mean Batman as we think of it. Um, it comes from a French term that had to do with the saddle or a horseman. So so the Batman in that sense was the personal servant of an officer who who got ready their horse. You know, was kind of like a squire to a knight almost, but it was in the military and it was even around in a thing you know, in Tolkien's day and, and your, uh, your personal servant, you know, in, in the, in the military was, you know, closer than a brother. It was, it was a deep friendship that would, would develop between the two characters. Somebody like a, like a shield bearer, you know, in the military of old. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's very easy to see that that was the relationship. You, you see the things that Sam does for Frodo in the books. It's blatantly obvious. This is a historical fact. It's blatantly obvious, but an ideologue with that sort of queer theory blinders on must see everything like a homosexual relationship, of course, is going to look at that and disregard all of the, the objective historical fact and just say, no, nah, they're probably gay. I mean, you see how dumbed down your thinking has to be to, to come to that level. And, and, and then it's selfish. It's selfish because your, your need to, to push that into everything comes from whatever's really important to you. We'll get to some more of that here in a second. But I do have another super chat I wanted to catch up on. Four ninety nine dollars from Professor Logos. Good to see you, Professor Logos. Haven't seen you around in a bit. So these queer theorists mistakenly believe that being gay is a substitute for personality. That's a great point. That's a great point. Because they'll be quick to tell you. They will be quick to tell you. Well, I mean, you know, homosexuality isn't some new invention. I mean, you know, this has been going on for, you know, the human history. And yeah, yeah, men being sexually attracted to men and females being sexually attracted to females, that, that's been around, all right? That's, that's, a, that's been in our history. Not what we culturally understand and think of when you say the word gay today or LGBT community today or any of that nonsense. So much of what you think of when you say that today is truly just a fabrication of our current day culture. Spartan warriors didn't think of themselves as gay. You know, the Greek man didn't think of himself as gay if he had a dalliance with a young boy or whatever. They weren't labeling themselves and then building this identity around their sexual orientations. They were who they were. And if and if, if this if their religions or philosophies or whatever didn't prohibit this or that orientation, then they acted on it when they wanted to act on it or whatever. It wasn't like a this or that. It wasn't a label. It wasn't any of this nonsense awareness kind of thing. It wasn't any of the stuff we think about it is, as it is today. <clears throat> so you, you you wouldn't see all of these ancient myths or stories. You know, you don't have to look for for coded. You know, gay. I mean, a, a lot of the the ideologues today they think that our history was was all a bunch of Victorians. Like every stage of history was just a bunch of Victorians repressed and not able to to say who they really were. You know, and, and crying out for help, and they're crying out for the heroic, the heroic queer theorists to look at their literature now 
in modern day and, and reveal the, the truth of it or whatever. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. It is about your, your, your selfishness, wanting to see everything, wanting to see your own needs or your own agenda into everything you see around you. This is something you're supposed to grow out of. Again, I, I've talked about this, a lot of these a lot of these mentalities of the woke ideologues, of any ideology, but we're specifically seeing it now of the woke ideologues. A lot of these mentalities are such an adolescent mentality. You're supposed to grow out of that.